Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and welcome to a new era in World of Warships Legends. Whether you like it or not, they have finally arrived. And uh, so today I give you our very first look at the Tier 7 American aircraft carrier Lexington. We're running Ernest King with Jersey Swirsky and Taman Yamaguchi as our commander inspirations. We are running Swatting at Flies, Stronghold, Hidden Threat, and Look at Me Now. Now, I say Hidden Threat, but I honestly think that I should probably go with the Out of Sight on this one. Uh, in the video that you're going to see, I was running Hidden Threat, but definitely want to buff the bombers for the Americans. Because your bombers are your, uh, your number one damage dealer. Uh, we are running Look at Me Now and Fully Packed. We also have Flight Control Mod 1, AA Guns Mod 2, Concealment System Mod, and Air Groups Mod 3. We are fully upgraded as well. Running a Community Contributor Flag and the Shadow Permanent Camo that I made. We have 57,300 hit points with 16% torpedo damage reduction. On the aircraft, you get Curtis SB2Cs, and for one squadron, your hit points is 3770. Cruise speed of 113 knots. Maximum speed of 145 knots. Attack unit size is only three planes, but your maximum aircraft squadron is six. So you'll send six planes out each time you send a new squadron out. And they attack in threes, so you'll get two runs per uh, per squadron, as long as you don't get all of them shot down. Detectability range is 10 kilometers. You have 15 aircraft on deck of the bombers and 15, or of the torpedo bombers and 15 of the dive bombers. Uh, aircraft restoration time is 68 seconds on the torpedo bombers, 65 seconds on the uh, dive bombers. Uh, the hit points on the dive bombers is a little bit more because we buffed it, so it's at 4437. And the same thing, detectability range on the uh, dive bombers is 9.3 instead of 10 kilometers. That's again due to that commander buff that we put on. And then maximum torpedo damage is 6733 with a 38 knot torpedo and torpedo range of 4 kilometers. The bombs, maximum bomb damage is 10,120 with a 52% chance of setting fires. Artillery, you have two different 127 millimeter secondaries. You have the Mark 24, which has a range out to four and a half kilometers. You have eight of those and they reload every six seconds. 1800% or 1800 HE shell damage with a 5% chance to set fires. Of the 127 millimeter Mark 32s, you have four dual turrets that reach out to four and a half kilometers, reload at six seconds, and have an 1800 HE shell damage with a 5% chance to set fires. AA defense. This is where the Americans are kind of uh, shining here. The American Lexington has the best AA, I believe, out of the uh, aircraft carriers in general. It has. 20 millimeter Mark IVs, you have 16 of those with a 73 average damage per second and a 2.6 kilometer firing range. You have 40 millimeter Bofors Mark I's, which are dual turrets, you have two of those. Average damage per second is 29 with a firing range out to four and a half kilometers. Then you have your 40 millimeter Bofors Mark II's, you have 23 times four, they're quad launchers and you have 23 quad launchers. 466 average damage per second, reaching out to four and a half kilometers. And then you have your AA guns, your uh, 127 millimeter Mark 24s. You have eight of those that do 82 average damage per second and reach out to 6.4 kilometers. All right, maximum speed 33 knots with an 1180 meter turning circle radius, 15.6 second rudder shift, concealment. With our current build specializing in the concealment, we've gotten our surface detectability down to 6.6. .6. Detectability by air is 9.3, and a guaranteed is always two. If we look at our armor, you can see there ain't a whole lot of armor there. You have 19 millimeters of plating pretty much everywhere. And then if you look at the Citadel, 
Well, the deck is only, what do we got? 19 millimeters. Oh, that's the side plating. Let's look at the uh, upper plating. The deck plating is 13 to 19 millimeters as well. So, Citadel is basically the entire center of the ship. You want to be shooting towards the waterline. And uh, it does extend slightly above the waterline, even though you can't really see it here. But anyway, you have tough aircraft. When a, uh, aircraft with above average HP pool. You have powerful AA defense, above average AA gun firepower. And secondary reach, above average secondary battery rate. When commissioned, Lexington was one of the largest aircraft carriers in existence. She was converted from an unfinished battle cruiser. This ship had good armor and advanced torpedo protection. Owing to her dimensions, the aircraft carrier was equipped with a very spacious hangar and was armed with numerous AA and dual purpose artillery. The ship's powerful propulsion created very high speeds. She entered service in 1927 and there were two of them in the series. So let's take a look at her. Now I'm running the shadow camo because there's just something about a really big ship that is completely black that just gets you going, or at least it does me. So uh, let me know what you guys think. And with that being said, let's get to the gameplay. Alrighty, so we're gonna be on shards and we're gonna have us a uh, an aircraft carrier match. So uh, right off the bat, I just wanna say I am not an aircraft carrier player. I will not be an aircraft carrier player. So take everything that I'm about to say with a grain of salt, okay? Your mileage may vary. But uh, it's just not for me. It's not a play style that I'm interested in. So I'm putting this game out here solely because, honestly, it's the best game I've had so far in it. And I want to get a game out on the day of release. So, you know, I know it's not the greatest game in the world. But uh, it can showcase a little bit of how I personally would use the aircraft carrier. And the way I use an aircraft carrier is not for damage at all. The way I use it is solely to A, give my team an advantage by finding and getting, hopefully getting rid of their destroyer as quickly as possible, and then spreading out to look for damage. Um, now, obviously, we're in a legendary tier match, which is not a problem because I'm in an aircraft carrier. I don't have to actually put my ship in any harm whatsoever. I can just sit out there and do nothing the entire game and still manage to affect the match because I'm an aircraft carrier. So this is the thing. Like, I didn't ever want aircraft carriers to come to console, but at the same time, I understand why people did want them to come to console, and so I don't really care one way or the other. A lot of people have been asking what I think of this or that, and it's just like, I'm meh, you know? I knew they were coming. There's nothing I can do about it. So all I can do is, is play around and try to, uh, you know, enjoy it while it lasts. And uh, now, right off there, you see my first mistake. When you're using dive bombers, you don't get as long as with the torpedo bombers. Okay, so you have to come in at a little bit closer. Now, I've been deciding uh, towards the rest of this match uh, to go ahead and start my attack runs at about two kilometers and two and a half kilometers maximum. And that allows me to get a pretty good target solution and drop on a target relatively well. And uh, there we get our first bomb hit. We do a whopping 200 and, or 2,400 damage, but we are also having this guy spotted. Uh, right now, I don't think it's actually us spotting him. I think somebody was running... Uh, well, I guess nobody is running a radar. There's two battleships right there. Could be a radar. But uh, we're trying to keep him spotted anyway. And here we're trying to get our bomb drop. We drop at the last possible second. And uh, unfortunately, we lead him just a little bit too much. Um, again, this is something that I will get better with uh, with time. This is the problem with trying to get a game out on the day of a re release. That's why I usually wait a day to do my videos because I just tend to get better games later in the day. But, you know, I didn't put out a video specifically for the fact that I wanted to get an aircraft carrier game out as quickly as possible. Uh, and then tomorrow we will have our aircraft carrier game in the Chicago. So uh, keep that in mind. Now... We had him spotted. He lost a lot of his hit points. A lot of people would probably go, okay, that's that's great. I'm going to go after damage now. But no, it's still a Shima. If he's not dead, he needs to be uh, found again. So uh, we're going to come right over here. We're actually going to drop some uh, fighters over top of our team here in the cap uh, just to keep their aircraft carrier from harassing them, hopefully. Even though I think their aircraft carrier is focusing more on our guys over there at Charlie. 
And uh, we're going to go out here and see if we can't find the Shima. We know he's not in his smoke because we captured the base. So we're just going to keep going past the smoke and wait for the AA to start up. As soon as the AA starts up, we know exactly where you're at. Even though you're not spotted, I can just go straight at you because I can see where the AA is coming from. And sure enough, there he is. We get inside that two and a half kilometers. We get him detected. And we're going to fail, I believe, on this bomb drop as well. Uh, drop the bombs, but we managed to miss just a bad bad lineup he was turning we're trying to uh, drop bombs on him it's not easy but at least we're keeping him spotted the fact that we're keeping this guy lit up is gonna allow our team to shoot at him hopefully you would think I mean as Shima's detected you definitely want to shoot at him uh, and they are shooting at him. Alaska gets a hit there and then we're gonna come across the bow again drop the bombs but again he's moving too fast we don't lead him enough this time not a very good angle and again these are things that uh, you know are just things that you want to try to work on. If you're going to be an aircraft carrier, might as well be the best aircraft carrier player you can be, right? So these are things that you need to figure out is what is the best angle of attack for each of the planes and stuff. For dive bombers, you definitely want to be going either a, from rear to front or front to rear. It's easier to go rear to front because you're going with the ship that you're dropping on, uh, obviously, instead of going across the ship. Now, we managed to shoot down one of their planes. Their aircraft carrier's in my vicinity, so we're going to be trying to get out of here. Uh, moving over to use this island as cover to keep anybody who actually could shoot at us from being able to shoot us. And then the goal here was to get behind this island and slow down and stop. And then eventually start uh, trying to affect the right cap. Now, their Shima's gone. We did everything we were we were needed to do with the Shima. Got rid of him as quickly as possible, even though we didn't directly do much. We only did 2,400 damage to him. We kept him lit up for a long time. That allowed our team to take him out. Now, we come in here to try to uh, do something to this Ochikov, and then he gets absolutely obliterated by the Yami. So then we're able to f just go straight across, and that's when this Yami here goes broadside to our entire team, and our guy at uh, Bravo is going to have an absolutely beautiful shot at him. And that's going to be the end of this Yami. Uh, I was going to go for the Yami, and then, uh, like I said, he dies. So then it's straight to the Odin. Now, this Odin is AFK. Nothing I can do about that. It is what it is. But now we get a chance to test our bombs when we can actually hit a stationary target, right? So uh, we're going to see just what kind of damage we can look for in the best possible scenario of hitting all of your bombs, or at least most of them. And we get five hits with a fire. Huge damage, right? Not really. I mean, five hits and a fire. The fire is going to continue to tick because it's AFK player. But as you saw, we only did about 7,000 damage in the initial drop. And that's with five bomb hits. So, yeah, not going to give you a whole lot of damage. And that's one of the things that I, I just, A, enjoy because I'm going to be on the receiving end of these things. So I don't want them to be that powerful. And B, it's just kind of nice to not have to worry about it. However, this time we come in. We hit him towards the rear of the ship, and we set two more fires. So we've got him burning three times. That's going to be the end of him. And uh, we're up to 23,000 now. I'm going to launch my planes, and I'm going to demonstrate something new. Uh, if you go to your map while you're flying your planes, you can set a waypoint, or before you fly your planes, you can set a waypoint, and your ship will autopilot itself there. It is not a perfect system. Uh, on PC, you were able to use a mouse to click exactly where you wanted your ship to go. You could set up multiple waypoints and all of that. On, a, on console, you can't really do that. You just select the square and then press the X button and it goes straight towards that square. So we're going to try to get in and capture a base. And uh, also go out to find their aircraft carrier. Now, again, I know this isn't a game where I showcase the huge amount of skill or anything like that. But then again... Is there really a game where you showcase a lot of skill in an aircraft carrier? Really? I don't think so. But uh, I don't think that there's going to be any huge barn burner games in an aircraft carrier. I just don't. I don't think they do enough damage to, to really warrant people going crazy with them. Um, and I also think that the games are generally over too fast for an aircraft carrier to really get going. Uh, aircraft carriers are best when they're capable of... Uh, sustaining fire over over time when you can continuously spot or continuously get in position to have ship or have your planes over top of ships for a very long time um, now we spotted their aircraft carrier briefly we're going to use the mountain to come in and uh, once we clear the mountain we'll have them to yeah we've got him detected again he's inside six kilometers 
and so we're going to be setting up. Now, we didn't even use our torpedo bombers in this. We didn't need to. Didn't really get a chance to. Um, the, the bombs for the Americans are actually really good, uh, but I'm definitely better with torpedoes. Uh, this was just me trying to showcase what we can do, and once again, we got a pretty big target. It'd be hard to miss him, and we managed to hit uh, six bombs, so all of our bombs, two bombs per plane, and uh, managed to uh, do a significant amount of damage bringing us up to 45,000. Now, we managed to also get into base, but uh, didn't get, and we got an assisted cap out of it. So, you can use these ships as a forward. Remember, these things have a lot of health. There's 57,300 hit points for this thing. It's not exactly a um, paper mache ship, you know what I'm saying? You can put it out there. I wouldn't do it early on, but, you know, late in a game like this, moving to capture a base that your, your ship, your friendlies haven't been able to, that sort of thing is something that you can consider. Um, again, this is just me showing you guys an early look at the ship. It's not a great game. It's nothing like that. Uh, we managed to, the team managed to get rid of everybody pretty quickly. Uh, the main thing is, like I said, using the aircraft carrier to find that destroyer was huge. Getting rid of Ashima that early in the match is a massive advantage for your team. So uh, again, 1486 XP, not bad, not great. So if you like what I'm doing, Punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.